Hold this up. Let's get it moving. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, Miss Sally. Miss Eleanor? Uh, Jane? Now, come on, Joe. If you want to socialize, come in on your own time to it. Let's get these chores done. I usually can hit one of those. Hey, how are you, Miss Betty? Oh, oh. Good to see you. Oh, she's pretty. Hey, here comes the stage. We're going to let her run there from Adam. Oh. Hey, come on. Come on. Let her run there from Adam, man. Hey, will you come on? You know, if you just break down and spend a few dollars, you get a pair of boots that fit. Hey, Charlie, got any mail for us? No mail on this trip, little Joe. Hi, Charlie. Will you be staying at the hotel, miss? No, I'd like to engage a carriage. Yes, ma'am. Why do you reckon anybody want to cover up like that? Well, I don't know. I'm sure we'd like to get a look at what's underneath that veil. Yeah, probably uglier than a mud fence. <laughs> well, look, you want to stand here and socialize or get your work done? Waiting a minute. I'm not sure I'll stay. Anything you say. What are you doing here? I had no place else to go. Here, Amelia, we're sisters. I need help. You're the only person that can help me. Come in. Life shows in your face, Reagan. But it makes me ashamed you're my sister. I should, but I'll help you. However, you'll have to wait until the bank's open in the morning. You can stay at the hotel overnight, and I'll... I'll leave an envelope for you at the desk after nine. That's not the kind of help I need, Amelia. Well, I don't know what other kind of help I can give you, Reagan. Please, Amelia. Please, Amelia. Amelia, please. It's always been Amelia, please, hasn't it? Even now, fresh from your triumphs in San Francisco. You heard about that? Oh, yes, I heard. I heard about that incident and all the other incidents, too. People write, Reagan. 
There are always people to write to you about things like that. I didn't do anything. I couldn't help what happened. So I remember that's exactly what you said seven years ago with Charles. Amelia, that wasn't my fault. Wasn't it just? Well, he loved me, Reagan. For two whole years, Charles courted and loved me. And the day you came home from the school and displayed your feminine charms, he didn't even want me. Well, I don't blame him. No, you corrupted him like you've corrupted everything around you ever since you've been a child. Judging from your last escapade, you still haven't changed. I know what I am, Amelia. But I can't change unless you help me. Please, Amelia. You owe it to me. Owe it to you! Just remember this, Reagan. I don't owe you anything. Yes, you do. You do owe it to me, Amelia. For all of the love that Father gave to you. The smart, clever one. And denied me. Please, Amelia. Well, very well. Very well, I will help you. But you'll have to do as I say. And exactly the way I say for you to do it. As I promise. your driver. Bring in your luggage. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you, Charlie. What Adam say, Paul? Says the assay report in Sacramento was excellent. Hey, did I tell you? When's he coming home? Oh, not for a couple of days. He's having some meetings with a firm of mining engineers in San Francisco. Let me see. Now, look, Hoss, uh, go get the wagon. We've been around. Let me read it. You have all the way home to read it. Now, read the wagon. Yes, sir. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Yes, this will do. You sure this is what you want, Miss Miller? We got a little more expensive line that's yes, a lot this, more stylish. This is, this is what I want. This is what I want. Reagan. Hmm? Yes, those will be just fine, Amelia. Well, you'll need several for daytime, and at least one good black for church. Mr. Ramos, do you have my uh, pattern in a smaller size? Oh, I'm sure I can find one. It'll suit just fine. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, good morning, Amos. Get my order ready yet? Yes, sir. Got it all put away out and back. Good. Uh, excuse me, Reagan. There's someone I must see. Good morning, Ben. Oh, uh, good morning, Miss Miller. Good morning. Say, I've, uh, I've heard a most interesting rumor. Oh, what was that? Well, that you're seriously thinking about mining the area above Gunsight. Well, as a matter of fact, I... I have been giving it some thought. Uh, I'd like to talk to you sometime about investing in the venture, I mean. Well, uh, Miss Amelia, you know, mining, uh, particularly silver mining, is so highly speculative. I, mm -hmm. I think you'd probably find much safer investments somewhere else. Oh, come now, Ben. I'm not some poor widow investing life savings. Oh, of course not. No, I'm well aware of the risks involved. But uh, I'm also aware of uh, the rewards commensurate with them. <laughs> Well, to be frank with you, Miss Amelia, I, I just wouldn't want the responsibility of having you possibly lose any money. You sure this is everything, Miss Cartwright? Yes, thank you, Ems. Oh, uh, a couple of packs of cigars for my foreman. Ben, should you change your mind, you, uh, you would let me know? Yes, of course I will. Fine. Is that stuff? Yeah. 
morning, Miss Amelia. Good morning, Hoss. Your sister chose the same dress materials as you selected, Miss Amelia. Fine. Thank you, Reagan. Uh, Reagan, this is uh, Mr. Cartwright and his son, Hoss. Good morning. Hi, ma'am. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Amos, please put that on my account. Here, ma'am, let me, let me take that for you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure, ma'am. You know, we didn't even know that Miss Amelia had a sister, so you're kind of a surprise around here. I'd say a real nice surprise, Miss Miller. Thank you. My name is Reagan. Reagan. I don't recollect ever having heard that name before, but I don't reckon many people ever heard of Hoss, neither. Hoss, that's a wonderful name. So big and strong, just like this country out here. Hey, bet you ain't even seen our country, have you? I'd be mighty happy to show it to you if, if you wouldn't mind me coming calling. I think it was very, very thoughtful of you, Hoss. I've not had a chance to introduce my sister to many people out here. I'm sure she'd be delighted to have a call. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. I'll sure do it. All right. Bye, Hoss. Bye, ma'am. Bye, Miss Reagan. Joe. Here, yeah, Pa. Didn't Haas cruise that timber up at Gunsight last spring? Yeah, yeah. Don't you remember I went up there and found him bogged down in a snowdrift? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's Haas now? I think I saw him out on the front porch. I don't think he's doing anything. Joseph. Yes, sir. Feet on the floor. Yes, sir. Adam writes as a firm in Sacramento wants us to quote a price on half a million board feet of timber. And do you think we could handle that out of the tract above Gunside? Boy, that'll take some doing, Paul. Yeah, well, why don't you ride up there and take a look? We're going to have to clear it anyway if we're going to do any mining. Uh, but Paul, can, can little Joe do that instead? Uh, why? Oh, well, I, I promised... Miss Reagan that I'd take her for a buggy ride and show her the country. And of course, she ain't she ain't gonna be here long. I just. Well. Sure. Thanks, Paul. Place on earth life. 
Regan, you, uh, you made up your mind yet? About what, Hoss? Well, about not making this just a visit, but settling down here. Well, I don't know. Settling down has such a permanent sound, doesn't it? Yeah, I reckon it does, but sort of nice sound, too. I mean, it's one that us folks here understand. Well... I don't know if it would be right for a person like me. Oh, sure it'd be right. Why, if the right person came along, it'd be right as rain. Can it ever really be like that, Horse? Sure. I mean, you get married and build yourself a house, and raise a family. And like they say, grow old together. Grow old? That's something you ain't gonna have to worry about for a long time yet, Miss Reagan. Uh, come on, you two. We're going to have coffee inside. It's getting chilly out here. Emilia was right. It is chilly out here. Let's go in. Fine. You know, I, uh, I think the Cartwrights actually enjoyed having dinner outside. Um, what were you and Haas, uh, talking about? I think Haas wants to marry me, Amelia. Oh. Well, are you considering it? Yes, I am. You know, you were right. Haas is different from any man I've ever known. Well, do you tell him anything about yourself? No. Aren't you afraid it might come up? Strangely enough, I don't think it would make any difference. Do you know, Amelia? He talked about growing old together. You know, I never thought about that. Growing old. Morning, Miss Reagan. I'm just having some coffee. Will you join me? Well, I'd like to very much, but uh, I have so many things I must do in town. My son Adam is coming in tomorrow. And tomorrow evening we have a little uh, dinner party at our home, and we were hoping that uh, you and your sister would join us, just family. Well, we'd be delighted. Horses told us so much about Adam. Well, I'm sure you'll have a great deal to talk about in common. He's just spent the past few weeks in San Francisco. San Francisco? Yes, yes. Would, um, would 7 o'clock tomorrow be all right? Yes. Yes, that would be fine. Good, we'll be expecting you. Morning. So anyway, old Solly never did find out what happened to his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Adam. Evening, Miss Amelia. Adam, I'd like you to meet Miss Reagan Miller. This is Miss Amelia's sister. My brother Adam, Miss Reagan. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you sit down, Adam? Thank you. I hope you brought some good news about the mining venture. Mining venture? Mm hmm? 
Adam, while you were away, Miss Amelia expressed some interest in investing. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid it'll be an expensive installation, but I think it'll be practical. Hey, Adam. Miss Reagan here just left San Francisco about two weeks ago. Now, I know it's going to be a big town now, but I thought maybe you might have run into some of her friends there. I knew very few mining people there, Horse. Well, I ran into quite a few people while I was there. Someday, maybe you can tell me who your friends are. Yes. Maybe I can. Ben, thank you for a wonderful evening. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, say, if Adam can get those figures over the house in the morning, I'll get a letter up to my broker in San Francisco. Um, going to have to convert some of my holdings. Well, I think something could be arranged. Do you think so? 10 o'clock be convenient. Hmm? 10 o'clock is fine. Reagan. Good night, little Joe. Good night. Good night, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you for a very pleasant evening. Well, the pleasure was all ours, Miss Reagan. Thank Good night. You. Good night. Good night, Miss Miller. Good night, Horse. Thank you. Good night, Miss Reagan. It's me that should be thanking you. This is one of the nicest evenings I ever remember. Good night, Miss Amelia. Good night, Horse. Miss Reagan Miller. Don't you go get no ideas either, brother. She's all staked out. That's one of the sweetest little gals I ever met. Will you look at him, Pa? He's got the same expression as a steer that's just been poleaxed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably the expression I had on my face when I was quoting your mother. Well, he's pretty serious about her. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about time one of you boys started thinking seriously of getting married. Pa, are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> hey, Paul, oh, I was just thinking, uh, since tomorrow's Saturday, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe tomorrow night we couldn't get some of the neighbors over here and have a little get-together and introduce Miss Reagan around, huh? Well, I don't know. It's a little short notice, but mm. I think something might be arranged. Hey, good. And if I'm real lucky, I might even have a little announcement to make. Hey, you son of a gun, congratulations! We were just talking about that. And now we get rid of you. Good night, Reagan. Emilia? Yes? Could you come in and talk a while? Well, it's, uh, it's quite late. Yes, I know that. I just don't think I can sleep. Probably realize, of course, that Adam heard about you in San Francisco. Yes, I know he did. I could tell the way he looked at me. Yes, I noticed that, too. He just couldn't seem to take his eyes off you all evening. Or aren't you worried about that? No, not particularly. Well, you should be. You know, once Adam tells Hoss about you, that not only ends your chances with him, but all my plans as well. Well, he's not going to tell Hoss. And what's to stop him? I've yet to meet the man that I can't handle. Well, Adam is not as naive as Hoss. He's still a man. And men are your business, aren't they, Reagan? Yes. Yes, they are, Amelia. Just remember this. The Ponderosa is my business. What you don't seem to understand is I don't want the Ponderosa. I want Hoss. Good night. I'd, uh, I really would like to study these reports just a little longer. All right, that's a good idea. Sure you want to stay for coffee? No, thanks. Uh, I suppose Horst got by and told you about the party tonight. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. He came by quite early to, uh, to tell us about it. 
So that's why I didn't see him at breakfast this morning. He is an early bird, isn't he? <laughs> well, he's also one of the finest men I've ever had the pleasure to know. I'd have to agree with you. Listen, I wonder if I uh, could speak to your sister a minute. Uh, yes, yes, certainly. She's, uh, she's out in the front yard. Thanks. We'll uh, see you tonight, then. Bye. Doesn't look like the same Reagan Miller I've heard about in San Francisco. Oh, you startled me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. What did you hear about me in San Francisco? I think you and I both know the answer to that one. I suppose you've told Hoss. No. Well, thank you for that. Don't flatter yourself. I did it for his sake, not yours. I wouldn't hurt Hoss. Then why don't you stop amusing yourself at his expense? Is that what you think I'm doing? Well, you are famous for the uh, manner in which you amuse yourself, at least in San Francisco, and uh, from what I've heard uh, from other men. No, it isn't true. I'm not like that. Aren't you? I did nothing to encourage those men. And what about my brother? Well, look at me. Do I look as though I'm going out of my way to beguile him? Do I, do I look as though I'm trying to entice him or anybody else? I won't have you telling me what to do. All right. Then I'll tell him. Tell him what? That the woman he loves is some special kind of monster? That I'm supposed to be responsible for every man that falls in love with me, but I'm not supposed to give any love back? I came here to get away, to be, to be ugly, to be plain, to hide, to get away from everything I've been. And I thought I'd found something here. I thought I'd found someone who, who didn't want me just as a, as a possession to display or a, a prize to show how important he is. Someone who saw past all of that and... Wanted me just for myself. Can you understand that? Is that too much to ask? No, I suppose it isn't. You do understand, don't you, Adam? You understand. All I ever wanted was to be loved. Just to be loved. Kisses the brother of the man she's going to marry the way you just kissed me. Well, she's talking about a different kind of love. You can't really change what you are, can you? You don't act like you're in a party mood. <laughs> so, Regan Miller finally met her match, did she? You think I failed with Adam, don't you? Mm. Well, maybe I did. But that's because it wasn't me out there. It was something that you tried to make me. 
will cost me a great deal of money, Reagan. But I've waited years to see you finally meet a man you can't handle. A man who can humiliate you. <laughs> Those are the two driving passions of your life, aren't they, Amelia? Money and seeing me humiliated. I tried to warn you. But whatever that devil is is so strong in you, you wouldn't listen. You couldn't take my help. Your help. Your help made me ugly out of jealousy. Your help pushed me at horse out of greed. No, we both have our own personal devils to feed, Amelia. But I prefer mine to yours. Reagan, what are you doing? I'm taking back my own personality. I'm going to show you and Adam how the real Reagan Miller works. Go ahead. Go ahead and prove to Hoss that Adam is right. It won't make any difference. Not a particle, because Hoss loves me. And nothing anybody says can change that. Now go ahead, get dressed. I'll prove it to you. There's nothing in this world that will make me go there and see you flaunt yourself. <laughs> oh, yes, there is. Your greed will make you come, Amelia. Mr. Horse want to see you in Punk House. He very upset about something. Uh, thanks, Arthur. Mm -hmm. Singh said uh, you wanted to see me. Yo, where you been? Well, you know where I've been. I've been over to Miller House to see Miss Amelia. Miss Reagan, you seen her too, didn't you? Didn't you? You asking me or telling me? I'm telling you. Here we are. Oh, boy. I think you know how to make pot. That's punch. <laughs> sure do. Fighting you. I must talk to you. There ain't nothing to talk about. Yes, there is. Now, Hoss, Adam wasn't trying to hurt you. He was trying to help you. By making love to Reagan? No, he wanted to talk to her. Sure he did. But he ended up with her in his arms and kissing her. Pa, I'm in love with that woman and I'm gonna marry her. Don't you understand that? What do you know about her? Not Pa! What did you know about my ma when you married her? I knew everything I needed to know. Fine. About I know everything I need to know about Reagan. You don't know everything about her. You don't know what Adam was trying to tell you. No! Pa, I'm not going to hear anything bad about Reagan from Adam or you or nobody else. Son, don't blind yourself to the truth about her. I don't care about her past. Oh, so it's not just the past. I'm worried about the future. Yes, fine. So am I. I'm going to marry her. That's going to be my future. 
If Father guests are arriving. Well, keep them waiting. No. They're my guests, and for my party, I'll invite them in. Pretty tonight for you. I mean, recite more than just plain pretty. Well, if you don't like it, I can change. Oh, no, no. Take a little getting used to it, I reckon. How are you, Miss Amelia? Just fine. Thank you, Hoss. I ain't never been too good at this, but we'll try it. I found what I wanted was a man, not a pretty dancing master. Reagan, I couldn't help seeing what happened this afternoon between you and Adam. Now we will just forget that that ever happened at all. I wanted to tell you, Hoss, but I was afraid I'd lose you. Reagan, you... You ain't ever got to be afraid of that. Thank you, Hoss. I couldn't stop it. You could see that. I know. Lovely tonight. Very fine dancer. Yes. Excuse me. May I? Thank you. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I can't dance another step. Could we get some air? You have been dancing quite a bit tonight. Of course, let's go outside. This land of yours, don't you, Mr. Cartwright? Yes. Then, of course, I'm rather prejudiced in favor of the Ponderosa. His horses, too. <laughs> he often speaks of it as if it were a woman. Yes. His horse loves it very much. Of course, horse always sees everything with uncomplicated, honest eyes. How do you think he sees me? As the woman he wants to marry. And uh, how do you see me, Mr. Cartwright? Well, 
Well, that depends upon which Reagan Miller I'm looking at. Well, do you approve of this Reagan Miller? Or do you prefer my sister's version? I would guess that the way you are now is the version that most men would know you as. I see Adam has informed you of my infamous past. Did he also tell you what happened this afternoon? Yes. Well, I can imagine what interpretation he put on it. That's not important. What is important is horse, is happiness. You don't think I can provide that happiness? No. Frankly, I don't. But my son, unlike perhaps most men that you've known, gives his love freely, openly, honestly, without reservation. And even the knowledge of your past couldn't shake it. If he can forgive that, why can't you? I suppose I could. If I thought that you'd really changed. But you don't believe that? No. Well, it doesn't really matter what you think, does it? Or Adam. Because Hoss will marry me anyway. Yes. Yes, Hoss would marry you anyway. But the love that would forgive you your mistakes in the past would never forgive you those same mistakes in the future. I won't make any mistakes. Won't you? Just this afternoon, Hoss saw you kiss Adam. But Hoss understood. Did he? When Adam came home, Hoss almost killed him. Now, what do you think would happen if you made that same mistake again? Hey. What are you two doing out here? Oh, we're just, uh, just admiring the night, Hoss. Um... I better get into our guests. Excuse me. There's a there's a ring around the moon. Could mean that it's going to rain tomorrow. Boss. About this afternoon. Reagan. I told you we were not going to talk about that anymore. Well, what if I were to tell you that it wasn't Adam's fault? That I had encouraged him? You wouldn't do that. Well, what if I did? You ain't like that. I could be like anything. You don't know anything about me. I... Things like that could have happened to me in the past. That's all over, Reagan. Don't matter. You, you don't have to tell me about those things. Just don't matter. No more than you getting all dolled up for this party. It, it just don't make no difference. I could tell you things that would matter. Oh, I, I know I ain't the first feller, or the only. I certainly ain't the handsomest. I got, I got a merit tell to me that every morning. Ain't nobody can blame you for searching around for something better. But once you made up your mind that I was the one, then you wouldn't have to search no further, ever. Your father was telling me how much you love this Ponderosa. What if I were to ask you to leave it, to go away? Why would you want to do that? I don't know. What if I just did? I, I hated it, and I wanted to live in a city. If that's what it'd take to make you happy, then that's what we got to do. 
and leave your father and brothers? Reagan, when we're married, we're going to do whatever it takes to make you happy. Can I tell you to make you realize what I am? Stop it. You stop it right now. I don't want to hear no more talk like that. Reagan, you love me and that's all that counts. Love you? Haven't you understood anything I've been trying to tell you? If I loved you, that would be the worst thing that could happen. Can't you see that? My love would destroy you, Hawk. Because you'd have to share it with every other man I'd ever meet. How do you know? Sage is leaving, miss. will be on time. Henry said the stage is on time, ladies. It'll be here any moment. You didn't answer my question. Please. Well, what's all the commotion about? They're going to be a hanging? We're all waiting for bars. Bars? What's bars? Uh, bars happens to be none other than Charles Dickens. Oh? What do they want him for? What do he do? What has he done? Mr. Dickens has written some distinguished novels. That's what he's done. Well, he shouldn't ought to hang a man for that. Possible man. Oh, but there's Mr. Cartwright. I do hope he has a nice welcoming speech ready for bars. <clears throat> Mr. Dickens, on behalf of myself and... On behalf of the Virginia City Literary Society, myself, and my sons. No, no, I... Pa. Pa, pa, go, go easy with that part, because you don't want to sound like one of those Carson City senators. Oh. No, no, easy. Now, look, Joseph, it isn't every day you welcome a man like Mr. Dickens to Virginia City. Well, well look, why, why not say something simple to him, like, uh, like, uh, howdy, Mr. Dickens? Well, let, let him think the rest for himself. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Cartwright. Morning. Are we all ready for Mr. Dickens? Well, I... as ready as we can be, I suppose. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, great day for Virginia City. Yes, it certainly is. You care to join me? Oh, it's a bit early for that, isn't it, Danny? Must you? This is no occasion for drinking, Mr. Stoker. Half the town is drunk already. Oh, Mr. Dickens ain't gonna mind, ma'am. He's a real broad-minded gent, is old Charlie. Charlie? Do you know him? Of course I know him. Him and me's both born in Portsmouth, England, you know. You wait till he sees a fellow Englishman here in Virginia City. It's going to be a real reunion. Hands across the sea. Speed is coming! Ah. Oh, no. Hello, Mr. Dickens. 
Dan Stoker's the name, a fellow countryman. In that case, what are you doing here? Are you an expatriate? Oh, no, sir. I'm a printer. Born in Portsmouth, just like you. And across the sea. Thank you, my good man. And you'll find a still larger bag on the stage. <clears throat> Welcome to Virginia City, Mr. Dickens. I'm uh, Ben Cartwright. I liked your letter inviting me here, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. It piqued my curiosity. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Dickens, on behalf of my... Uh, on behalf of the Virginia City Literary Society, my sons and myself, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Virginia City. I'm certain that your, that your presence on the stage of our social hall will be a, uh, a, a memorable one. Uh, yes, and yes, I, quite I, so. I, However, Mr. Cartwright, at this point, I feel a warm bath would be far more welcome than a welcoming speech. So if you would direct me to whatever serves as a hotel in your community. Uh, this way, Mr. Dickens, sir. Face to me. Council was held, lots were cast. Who should walk up to the master after supper that evening and ask for more? And it fell to Oliver Twist. Child as he was, Oliver Twist was desperate with hunger and reckless with misery. He rose from the table and advancing to the master, basin and spoon in hand, said, Please, sir, I want some more. The master was a fat, healthy man, but he turned very pale. What? said the master in a faint voice. Please, sir, said Oliver, I want some more. The master aimed a blow at Oliver's head, pinioned him in his arms, and shrieked aloud for Mr. Bumble the beadle. <laughs> <laughs> The workhouse board was sitting in solemn conclave when Mr. Bumble rushed into the room in great excitement and addressed the gentleman in the high chair. Mr. Limpkins, beg your pardon, sir. Oliver Twist has asked for more. For more, said Mr. Limpkins. Answer me distinctly, Bumble. Do I understand that he asked for more after he had eaten the supper allotted by the dietary? He did, sir, replied Bumble. That boy will be hung, said the gentleman in the white waistcoat. I know that boy will be hung. I know <laughs> that boy will be... <laughs> That a great number of you are more than a little familiar with my work? We sure are, Mr. Dickens. In other words, you have not only read Oliver Twist, you have memorized it? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, Mr. Dickens, but we're also following the old curiosity shop. And we all pray that you don't let little Nell die. Your devotion to my work might be an honor, madam. 
were it not for the fact that I have never given America the right to publish my writings. But it seems that certain unscrupulous American publishers have stolen my work and distributed it wholesale. Even in places as remote as this unimportant mining hamlet. I need hardly say that I find your participation in my reading completely without merit and a thoroughly disgraceful example of impertinence. Oh, come on, Charlie. Quit the preaching. Let's have some more little Oliver. <laughs> there will be no more of Oliver or of anything else. My performance is over. Some more little Oliver. We paid to have a little Oliver. He can't get away with this. Come on, fellows. Bye, you want me to call Mr. Dickens down for breakfast? No, I'll let him sleep. He'd get more sleep than he would in that hotel in Virginia City. <laughs> People in Virginia City had their way. They'd give him some sleep for a long time. Yeah, I'm kind of sorry that I allowed myself to be talked into inviting him here in the first place. Yeah, but Paul, he was good. I'll tell you, when he was reading that thing about that little Oliver Twist, I dang near bald. Sure would like to know how that thing came out. Huh? Hey, listen to this. Joseph, Mr. will you eat well, your listen, breakfast first, Dickens. please? Mr. Charles Dickens in dramatic reading at the social hall. Big thing here. Last night, the citizens of Virginia City turned out to a man at the social hall to hear Mr. Charles Dickens, celebrated English novelist, enchant us with dramatic readings from his novels. We were enchanted true, but only up to a point. Well, here's where they really give it to him. <laughs> then we were disenchanted and disillusioned. Uh, Joseph. Halfway through the performance, Mr. Dickens stopped the reading and... Wait a minute, I'll give you the paper in a minute. Mr. Dickens stopped the reading and then proceeded to say that Virginia City was an unimportant mining hamlet. We found, Mr. Dickens, the celebrated English novelist, to be quite rude. We also found... I uh, found this uh, big sale here, Dad. Let me see that, young man. Grossly insulting. No sense of justice at all. Imagine mocking me on the stage like the barbarians they are, and then condemning me. Oh, now, I don't think they were mocking you, Mr. Dickens. By reading along with you, they were just telling you in their own way how much they like your work. Bare-faced theft. A further installment to the old curiosity shop. That's where that dreadful woman read about it. Oh, names misspelled, dialogue mutilated. I have never given a common newspaper anywhere permission to publish my work. Oh, it's not that I care about the money. It's the principle of the thing. Well, if the people like your work and you don't care about the money, doesn't that sort of take care of the principle? Nonsense, my boy. It's not a matter of my personal considerations. It is a question of justice. I am going to tell the editor of this penny dreadful what I think of him. I think you'd better go along with Mr. Dickens. Sam Walker has a pretty good temper of his own. Thank you very much for reading us that newsworthy item, Joseph. Now, will you finish your breakfast? I've enjoyed your company, Adam. It's rare to find someone in these parts who can discuss books intelligently. But this is a matter I prefer to handle alone. Well, I just thought I'd introduce you to Sam. Is it possible he doesn't know who I am? Well, it's uh, possible, but I thought I'd introduce you anyway. Morning, Sam. Like to meet a friend of mine. Never mind the formalities, Adam. I know this gentleman quite well. It's a pleasure to have you visit my small shop, Mr. Dickens. The feeling is not mutual. I am not here to discuss your notice of my performance last night. That is freedom of the press. 
I suppose. But this, this pirated passage from my work, I want to know by what authority you dare to publish it. Well, seems like I didn't need much authority. I liked the story, so I printed it. I did send $25 to a Chicago publisher for the right to print his version. Of all the impudence, his version, his rights? What about my rights? Here, here, Boz. You tell him. Do you hear that, Mr. Walker? What about his rights? Always on the side of what's fair, I am, Boz. Only my friends are allowed to call me Boz. Get back to work, Dan. Mr. Dickens, you know publishing as well or better than I do, so you should know that without an international agreement on copyright, you haven't a leg to stand on. So, should we forget all this and you and Adam be my guests over at the hotel for lunch? Sir, this will be the last installment of my work to appear in your paper. Is that understood? Sorry, I can't buy that. Disappoint too many readers, but I tell you what I will do. I'm running Pickwick Papers after the old curiosity shop. The devil you are! And, just to be fair, I'll give you the $25 instead of sending it to Chicago. Did you hear that, Adam? Sounds reasonable to me. Bah! Walker, you will stop publication of my work as of today, or I shall see to it that your paper is closed down and your name discredited from here to New York. I'm sorry, I can't oblige. You see, there's so many people threatening to close me up that getting the same threat from you is quite an honor. Bah! Oh, Mr. Dickens, I hope you're not going to let little Nell die. If it disappoints you, she will. Well, I knew you wouldn't get very far with Sam. Citizens of Virginia City, may I have your attention, please? What are you doing? Demanding justice. I'm going to tell them the kind of man Sam Walker is. Well, this is not the way to do it. Sam Walker is a very popular man here. These people will ride you out of town on a rail. Expressing my views in a free country? Citizens of Virginia City, you all know who I am. I appeal to you as fair-minded Americans. The editor of that paper is a pirate. Like the worst kind of buccaneer on the high seas. He has plundered me of my property. He's a brigand, a highwayman, a freebooter. And all of you are little better if you support him. I demand, as a simple matter of justice, that you stop buying his paper. Ah, uh, uh, Pipe down, lime juicer. Tell it to the queen. Why don't you go on back to England? Yeah, go back where you belong. Lime juicer advertising from him. Tell it to the queen. Him to. Where is your sense of justice? Is that man to be allowed? Mr. Diggins. Mr. Diggins. Would you autograph this book, Mr. Dickens, for a fellow countryman? Always on your side, you know. Uh, Dan Stoker's the name. Here. What you doing in my book? I'm destroying it, my good man. It's contraband. Eh? Where have you been? See what you've done, Mr. Walker? Turned him against his fellow countrymen. He'd have autographed this for me if you hadn't turned Let him nasty. Let see that. Why, this is my property, not yours. That ain't your property either. That's contraband. That's what that is. Do you realize what you've done? Most of this is missing. It'll take me two weeks to get another copy from Chicago. Yeah, you can't blame me for that, Mr. Walker. I never tore up the book. It was Dickens what done it. I've had just about all I can take from your toadying and your drinking. Now get out of here, and this time stay out. You bet I will. You're no better than what he is. Him with his grand ears and his books, and you with your pick of you newspaper. Out of my way, Tim. I'm getting out of here. This ain't no place for an honest gentleman. Well, he's had his fill of Virginia City, and uh, he's waiting for tonight's stage east. What happened out at the newspaper? Well, he didn't get anywhere with Sam, so he tried it out on the crowd. Oh, and? 
Same thing at the theater, only on a smaller scale. I just hope he stays in his hotel room and uh, keeps out of trouble. We invited him here. We... I guess right after supper we should go into town and see what's happening. <laughs> Talk it over in my office this evening. S. Walker. Where? Did you have anything to do with this? Undoubtedly. Splendid illustration of poetic justice. Uh, don't you agree? Now, I don't know about the poetic part, but I'm gonna have to take you in. Now, come on. Oh, sir, are you quite insane? Yeah, suppose we let the judge decide that. Release me, sir! Come Release on. me at once, do you hear? Or take the consequences. Oh. Oh. Release me, sir, do you hear? Release me at once! Sheriff? Sheriff! Sheriff! For the last time, I shall not tolerate this. Sheriff! I demand that you send at once for the English ambassador. Then I had to lock him up. He admitted responsibility. Sheriff! Ah, thank heaven you're here. Not only have I been held incommunicado, but in a cubicle obviously reserved for common felons. Now, if this overzealous official will release me at once, I'll agree not to prefer charges. Well? Well, Mr. Dickens, I know that there's been a very bad mistake, but uh, the fact of the matter is that charges have been preferred against you by Sam Walker. What charges? Willful and malicious destruction of property. Preposterous. Sir, every hour that I am unlawfully detained makes your position more and more perilous. Mr. Dickens, the sheriff tells me that this whole thing can be cleared up right now if you only tell him what you were doing at the Enterprise office this evening. I shall tell him nothing. All it requires is a simple explanation. It may seem simple to you, Adam, but if I explain, I automatically admit that my presence at the Enterprise was suspicious. And as I hope you know, Adam, I am above suspicion. Now, how much longer is this sorry jest going to continue? Now, you listen to me, Roy. You know very well he couldn't have done it. No, I don't know. Look, he ain't stopped shooting off his mouth ever since he come to our town. He's been doing nothing but criticizing conditions here. He's inciting the people to close up Sam Walker's paper, and he's telling me how to run my jail. Oh, he's not oh man, about it. I wouldn't put it past him to wreck that territorial enterprise just out of sheer cussedness. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, will you do something for me? What? Release him in my custody. Man, the folks ain't gonna like that. I'll take full responsibility. Will you also guarantee to have him show up at his trial? He'll show up at his trial. All right.
All right, Dickens, you're out on Ben Cartwright's say so. That is, until the trial. What trial? What trial? Uh, Mr. Dickens, I'll, uh, I'll explain that to you. Fetch my hat. God save the Queen. Fetch my hat. Had about enough? By no means. Ah, splendid country. Hard work, clear mountain air, the scent of pine. A tonic for the soul as well as the body. You know, Mr. Dickens, you'd be mighty welcome to stay on here permanent if you liked. Thank you, horse. It is a temptation, but unfortunately, Men have a way of spoiling even the best of things. Mr. Dickens, there's something you don't quite cotton to, and maybe I can explain it to you. Folks around here, well, they, they judge a man for what he is, not what he was, in some other place, whether he was good or bad. You, you figured everybody ought to like you because of your reputation, but the fact is, all they care about is what they see in you now. And what do they see? Well, it's, it's sort of hard for them to understand why you get so touchy about that, that copyright business. I mean, after you yourself said that the money didn't, didn't amount to nothing. It's sort of hard for me to understand, as a matter of fact. Horse, all this land, your land, you love it very much, don't you? Yes, sir. Then suppose, just for the moment, suppose there were no laws to protect your land, that anybody could come along and take all or part of it. What would you do? My, my Paul poured his life into this land, Mr. Dickens. I reckon we'd have to fight for it. Then you do understand, Hulse. I've poured my life into what I write. And I have to fight for it. Yeah. No. Nothing ever looked at it like that. Few people do. They fail to realize how much a writer gives of himself, how much of his soul is locked into every word. Most men better themselves as they grow older. My father did just the opposite. Many months of my early childhood were spent with him. In debtor's prison. Then later, still a small child, I graduated to a blacking factory. Filling bottles with shoe blacking for a few pence a week in a dingy, basement room. I was sure it was going to be my future, that there'd be nothing else. Many of the stories that amuse and entertain you came out of the struggles and deprivations of those years. You know, maybe if you'd just explain it that way to them, that folks would understand, Mr. Dickens. I have never chosen to expose my private emotions to the world. And I certainly don't intend to start now. Come, horse. There's work to be done. Hello, Tim. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Let me give you a hand. Sure is a mess, isn't it? Yeah. Mr. Walker said it'd take about three weeks to get the place back in working order. Yeah, somebody had to get pretty riled up to do this to Sam. Had trouble with some of your readers lately? Only that Mr. Dickens.
Where's Dan? Mr. Walker fired him again. This time I think it's for good. When was that? The day that you and Mr. Dickens were in here. You know, Dan's a real good printer when he's sober. And how often is that? Not very often, Mr. Cartwright. Well, thanks, Jim. that stage. And Adam, don't quibble over the price. We need those water wagons bad. I'll do the best I can. Have them back here in a couple of days. Have a good trip. Our friends, happy at the power, friends. You give it to my paw, and my paw will give it to me. Ah, it's a potent power, I tell you. It's the power to knock old Satan knuckles loose in that sky and bring the velvet touch of water to this here parched land. Gentle drops to make your fields green again. Blessed moisture to fill those wells and wrench this evil dust and heat from the air. Now, folks, I'm going to rest tonight. As soon as your neighbors up the street get finished making arrangements for me, I'm going to go to work. I'll take a last good look at that blazing chariot up there. Tomorrow night you're going to all be mud and shouting thanks to Tulsi Weems. Oh, Ben, you're just the man we want. I am? For what? Well, you'll know soon enough and be just as glad as the rest of us. Come on. Well, there's another fire, but we don't need much more. Here he is, boys. Now we can swing it. Ben's got as big a stake in this as the rest of us. He'll kick in. Well, sounds like money talk to me, Abe. Like maybe you fellas want me to buy something, huh? Water, Ben. Water. Since the drought, our town's become church mouse poor, Ben. And we all dug deep. Providence led this man to our town, Ben. And he ain't trying to gouge us either. Just $30 from you and we'll have the 200 he's asking. And he's ready to go to work right now and end this drought. Now, hold on there. You boys thinking of, of hiring that, that rainmaker out there, the one I saw his wagon a minute ago? You should have been here to hear him talk. That man's got the power, I tell you. Well, Fan, I'd, I'd say that this long dry spell we've been having is out of your thinking. But do you remember that spellbinder that was out here last winter? That medicine man, the one with the big voice and all those fancy bottles? You fellas thought he had the power, too, and you bought every bottle he'd sell you. Oh, Fred, did it, did it cure your arthritis? What about you, Abe? Did it fix up your gout? Fellas want to waste money you can't afford. That's your business, but count me out. Yeah, that horse needs water, and these horse troughs are all dried up. Uh, tell you what, going down to the river stable, I'll give you a bucket for a nickel. Uh, tell them we'll pay them just as soon as that committee gets here with my money. We got her made, Juby. Sure, Paul. You can do anything. Oh. Now, don't 
Don't fret, child. Our old Paul's finally got himself a job of work. We're gonna have money so I can get you some nourishing broth. Real bed with a cool sheet down to the hotel. Maybe even a little doll to help you get better. We're gonna set old Satan back on his heels. That's what we're gonna do. says 90. Yeah, it's hot. Oh, I got four more bags in there. Give me a hand, will you? Ben, you wouldn't want to kill off the town sheriff, would you? Now, I've got to conserve whatever strength I've got to keep law and order in town. Oh, Roy, that's just about the weakest excuse I've ever heard. Well, it's coming from a weak man. Ben, if it don't rain soon, I feel like I'm going to shrivel up to nothing. Well, that's funny. That isn't the way I heard it over the saloon. The way they told it to me, you were tucking away so much beer that uh, you could keep a brewery in business. <laughs> Tell you what, you help me tote these and I'll buy you a beer. Are you trying to bribe the law? But I am a weak man, I said it, so... Shall we make it two beers? Huh? <clears throat> two beers. Oh. You be careful you don't melt away, Roy, working so hard. Lucky under. Here comes that rainmaker. Looks mad enough to bite his bike in half. The fellow down the street pointed you out to me. He said that you was uh, Ben Cartwright. Are uh, you owning up to that? Yeah, I'm Ben Cartwright. Well, I just wanted to gaze a spell on the kind of a man that would snatch the food from a sick little girl and cheat a man out of an honest day's job. Now, hold on there. What are you talking about? What little girl? My little girl, my little Mary Beth. They're racked with fever she is down there, needing care. Her poor mother trying to tend to her in a stifling furnace of a wagon. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You're sorry, them empty words, mister. You're just mean, plain, miserable mean. You got spite and venom in your heart. Now you look here. Name is Weems. I'm from Tennessee, mister, the Big Smokies. And I think poorly on a man, I tell him right straight out to his face, not like you, telling those men I'm some kind of a quack and a cheat and a figure. Now you look here. We've had just a minute, Ronald. They said those words, yeah. But I didn't mean them in any personal sense. I was just trying to explain the way I... Oh, you explained fine, just fine, mister. They was all set to hire me till you come sticking in with your... your mealy mouth, penny-pinching gabble. Now, look, Weems, or whatever your name is, I don't believe in rainmakers. I don't believe there's a man in the world can dredge water out of a sky that doesn't want to give it. If I thought there was, I'd bet my last dollar on him. You're wrong, mister. You're dead wrong. Now I can make them heavens open up. I can make the thunder and the lightning. I, I can flood this land with life-giving rain. I got the power, mister. You better believe that. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Weems. I just don't believe. But I'm also sorry that you have a sick child and you can't take care of your family. We'll have some rain a couple of days, and if we do, then there'll be plenty of work for everybody. Honest work. Maybe this will tide you over till then. Help people, mister. Help people don't take the insult of charity from no man. Mr. 
mister, we don't allow no gunplay in this town. I wasn't really going to shoot. Old devil got a halt of me for sure. I wasn't going to shoot. You're going to come down to that jail and cool off now. Come on. Roy, what's the point? Man has a family to take care of. His family's going to be a sight better off with him in jail. He ain't got a dime. You heard him say so yourself. And in this case, the town will pay for good food and a place for them to sleep until I decide to let him out of jail. Well, they're mountain folks too, Ma and the kids. They don't take charity either here. No, we'll see about that. Come on. Oh, Ben, I'm in luck. I was afraid maybe you snuck out of town before you bought my beer. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to drop by your office. You were? Yeah. You forgot something. Oh, yeah. It wasn't loaded. I didn't think it was. You know, Roy, I always thought you were a kind of a soft-hearted old coot. Well, what have I done now? You didn't lock up Weems. Well, I sure did. He's locked up right now, and that's where he's going to stay until he gets some sense into his head. What about his family? I sent Clem out to see that they was put up at the hotel, and the town is going to have to foot the bill. Roy, you uh, might have Doc Crane look in on the little girl. You know, we said she was kind of sick. Then I already sent for the doc. Now, if you got any more sage advice for this poor old stupid sheriff, I'm listening. <clears throat> well, Roy, as a matter of fact, I have. Oh, you have. Get yourself a beer and cool off. That's just what I intended to do. Two of them, in fact. Cal, a couple of beers for a good friend of the sheriff here and put them on my account. Oh, and uh, Cal, two beers. Two. Oh, Clem. What about? Roy, tell you I was buying. You better put another beer on my account for Clem here. Something happened out there, and you ain't gonna like it. Now, it's too hot for riddles. What is it? I tried to do what you told me, but they just up and left. That Weems kid, Juby, nice as pie, I talked to him. All of a sudden, the little varmint kicked at me. He spit at me. He spit at me. Called me a whole bunch of names. They jumped in the wagon, and they was gone. Well, don't come running to me. Get on your horse and go after him. There's a sick child in that wagon. But I did. I couldn't have been more than five minutes behind him, and you know it. You know that wagon ought to have been a cinch to follow out there in that dust. It was as if the earth swallowed him up. There wasn't nary a trace. Have a beer. Thanks, Roy. Well, you can. I may not be now tomorrow night. That tub were any bigger, I might climb in there with him. Hi, Paul. Couldn't sleep either, huh? The way that thing's croaking, there's no use trying. How long is it going to last, Paul? How long? Yeah. You aren't asking, Hoss. You're just hoping like the rest of us. Yeah, I am. Like when I was a young and I used to ask about that red wagon for Christmas. I wasn't asking. I was hoping. Check that south water hole today, Paul. Dry as a powder house. I uh, ran into Mr. Olmstead this afternoon. He thanked me for those three barrels of water you turned over to his place this morning. Figured as long as it ain't gonna rain, we might as well all go together. Ain't no use in going one at a time. 
Besides, the homesteads have got them five little young'uns. Well, when Adam gets back with those water wagons, we'll be able to get some water out of the lake and make it easier for everybody. Might as well get up to bed. It's no warmer there than it is here. And if you don't cut out that croaking, I might just pull the plug on you. Listen, Paul. Listen, I <laughs> have to stuff my ears with cotton not to hear that green friend of yours. No, 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 not the frog. Listen. You hear that? That's what I'm hearing. Hear it? Sounds like it's come from the barn. Sheriff sent you to the hotel. What are you doing here? Sheriff sent us no place. Hill folk don't take handouts. This is my barn. Isn't that a handout? Ain't no such thing. You owes us something, mister. I figure you owes us a place to stay until Ponton get us. Now, wait a minute, little fellow. Oh, I'm not going to argue as to what I owe you, son. But the barn is no place for your sister and your mother. And we got plenty of room in the house with soft beds and good food. No, that'd be charity. Now, son, your sister needs a doctor. I won't have no flatland doctor pawn over Mary Beth with his dirty fingers. And you get. You stick your nose in here again, and I'll blow it off. You hear? Gal in there needs some decent care and a decent bed. Not in that, that stifling barn on a pile of lumpy hay. That kid in there, he's, he's crazy. You don't know what he's doing. I can jump him easy, boy, and get that little gal out of there and give her the Leave kind of care. I'm going to the town to get Doc Crane. But, Paul, that... don't argue. And stay away from that barn. Hoss, the little girl in there. I saw it back east. It's typhoid fever. Cartwright, I've got to see Dr. Crane. I'm sorry to have disturbed you at this time of night, Mrs. Crane. My husband isn't here, Ben. He left this morning for Perrysville. There was a mine accident. Oh, no. Well, I, I'm sorry, but he was needed. It's not one of your boys. Oh, no, no, it's a little girl. I think she has, I think she's got typhoid fever. Typhoid? Well, I'm sorry to disturb you. Thank you. Good night. Okay, Joe, let her go.
Ma'am, there's no purpose serving you sitting out here. I'll fix you a cup of coffee. How about you, boys? Something to eat, maybe? Say, uh, bacon, eggs, toast, and coffee. I ain't hungry here. And even if I was starving, I'm hill people. And we don't take handouts. Of course, that all depends on how you look at it. I think there's a big difference between a handout and a helping hand. One may be charity, but the other one's friendship. Friend? That big hulk you call in the barn and steals my sister. Come on now, boy. You make it sound like the worst bunch of low-living varmints that ever crawled. Look, you've got to admit your sister's a lot better off upstairs in that bed than she was sleeping out in a barn on a stack of hay. Ma was taking care of her fine. Was your ma getting her fever down like horses? I hate the thought of that big ox up there. Him and his big clumsy hands prodding in a pulling over... Big maybe, but not clumsy. Sure, I've seen him bend a horseshoe with those hands. But I've also seen him pick up a hummingbird just as gentle as a feather. I got half a mind to go up there and take my sister away from him. Why don't you just rest easy for a while? If anybody can pull your sister through, it's that big ox who's up there right now. Little lamb. Everything's going to be fine, you hear? You're already a heap better than you were. When you get to where you can really hear me, I'm not even saying you did or something. Morning, Ben. Say, you're an early bird. Don't be another hot one. This boy, I gotta talk to your prisoner. I want you to hear what I have to say. Well, all right, man. Come on. Wing. Wing. Guard right here wants to talk to you. I said it yesterday, mister. You got a glib tongue. You know the words that can cut up a man's life. What words are you going to slice me with today? I came here to tell you something about your little girl. You got something to tell me, you spit it out. Well, last night I... I found out that Mary Beth is... Well, she's sicker than even you think. Well, there's no use beating about the bush. She has typhoid fever. Typhoid fever? Man, this is, this is really bad news. Yeah. Typhoid, what's that? What's this typhoid? Mary Beth's gonna be all right, isn't she? Typhoid is a very serious disease, even in a strong man, to say nothing of a little girl like I yours. You better let me out of here, Sheriff. Mary Beth needs me. Now, easy now. See, she's at the Ponderosa. I'm afraid you won't be able to see her, though. You're talking nonsense. If she's there, I'm going to see her. Well, you don't, you don't understand. See, my son has... Roy, you have no choice. All right, William. Get your belongings. Ben! Let me get this straight. You're telling me that your boy Hoss locked himself up in his room with that little girl and he ain't about to come out until she makes a turn for the better? Yeah, he sort of beat me to it. Now, somebody had to do something to help Mary Beth, and well, Hoss just up and did it. Well, does he know that she's got the typhoid? That's why he's got the door locked. Won't let anyone in. Well, ain't he scared? Well, sure he's scared. So am I. You mean this... Boss, this boy of yours might catch typhoid fever from my little girl. He might. Doctors don't rightly know how it spreads. And he's still bent on sticking with her? Trying to save her? Yeah. It's the devil's work, that's what it is. It took away the water, and he's brought the hot blast of vengeance to this blighted land. See, that's what that fever is. Fever that's twisting and torturing her. It's the curse of Satan. Cartwright. 
I'm gonna teach that devil a lesson. I'm gonna choke off the hot flaming breath. And I'm gonna do it with clean, pure water. Mr. Weems, that ain't gonna help your little daughter none. Now, when I bring rain, cool rain, it's gonna put Lucifer on the run. It'll kill the fiery touch, the flaming insider. What'd be the nearest hill with a fair to Midland bulge in it? Well, I'd, I'd say that Connell Hill, wouldn't you? About three miles south of here? Yeah, that'd be about right. I'll get my wagon. Um, Roy, why don't, you, uh, why don't you take Tulsa right on to Connell's Hill and uh, I'll fetch his wagon for him. Yeah, that's better. I can get working faster. Yeah. Listen, keep him away from my house, will you? There's nothing he can do there anyway and just might mean more trouble. Who knows, though? He might be able to bring rain. He thinks he can. Well, yeah, he might be. <laughs> it, this way, at least, he'll be out of the way and he'll be doing something and might make him feel as if he's helping. Yeah. All right, man. Listen here. Yeah. Little one, you're gonna be all right, you hear? There's no loss. There. Now look, boy, if you don't eat, you're going to collapse from hunger. And you're not going to be able to keep an eye on us low-life cartwrights. Look, it's not charity. You're gonna work after you eat. So you don't think us Cartwrights are gonna give anything away, do you? Well, maybe you're pulling something. Maybe you ain't. But you made a deal and I'm calling you. You set that there grub on the ground and back off. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. to give you a hand. Oh, I gotta do it. Mary Beth, how is she? Yeah, well, she, uh, she's doing as well as can be expected. Where, uh, Where's Juby? Didn't come to watch his paw? Juby wouldn't budge. He's just sitting by my house, hanging on that squirrel gun. Says he'll, says he'll shoot us if Mary Beth, well, if anything happens. Well, then Juby done an evil thing. It, it had jumped him, took away his gun. Tulsa. Boy's trying real hard to be a man. If I was to jump him and take that gun away from him, it'd make him feel like he was still a child. He won't do no harm. You know, I was wrong about you, mister. You got a heart. You got a you got a feeling for things. Well, I'm gonna prove you was wrong about me. Easy, son. Sneaking varmint, I had a... For what? I was just bringing you some lemonade. Mary Beth. Dear God. Hey, 
Hey, Joe. Uh, Joe, send me up another bucket. Mary Beth's feeling real bad. Right. understand this, mister. My little sister dies. So does he. Knock you out of that sky, Satan. I'm gonna boot you out and send you back down below where you belong. Hey, did I just hear thunder? That ain't thunder, that's cannon fire. Cannon what? He's a doing it, Ma. Paws up there in the hills are kicking the devil out of the sky, whomping up a rainstorm. Look at, look at there. Paws really shaking up that sky. Well, I admit it makes a lot of noise and it looks right pretty, but you don't think all that commotion is really going to bring rain, do you? Why do you know about it, Mister? Them rockets is made a secret way. Oh. Hey, Joe? Yeah? Send me up some dry sheets. I never saw anything like it. 
He really thinks he can make it rain. Oh, well, Ben, after watching him work and all, ain't it ever occurred to you that just maybe you could be wrong? Oh, Roy. Nothing's gonna convince me that a lot of colored powder and rockets and explosions are gonna bring rain. Oh, now, there could be something to it. Certainly you heard that it always seems to be raining during a big battle. Well, I had an uncle who was in a lot of big ones during the War of 1812, and he recollected how he was just always a fighting in the mud and downpours every time the big cannons let loose. Not a cloud in the sky. No, but Ben, give him a chance. Oh, Roy, he's running out of supplies. He's ready to collapse. That'll do it. Fire the cannon. Satan, to burn him. I didn't have the power when I needed it most, Mr. Cartwright. From Mary Beth. He tried. All a man can do is try. I failed. There ain't a speck of a cloud. Oh, Lucifer's laughing and grinning at me for sure. I done fought him. I lost. Easy, no answer. Easy. <sighs> you put yourself through the ring there. Come down to the wagon and rest a spell. No, I gotta get back to my family. Didn't have no word on Mary Beth? No, no word. Well, that's something. I reckon they'd have sent somebody if... Of course they would. Ben, uh, I better be heading back to town. Mr. Weems, I sure hope your little daughter gets better and not going back to jail, well... Well, come on, Williams. Ponderosa just over the next hill. You can pick up your cannon and things in the morning. I'll leave him here. Satan owns him. Won him fair and square. She's quit whimpering, she'll be. I, I don't hear nothing, Ma. 
Nothing at all. The horse has just got to rest and easy, that's all. He's got to quiet it down. Furnace of Satan has cursed this land. This fever flame's got a hold of my Mary Beth. I tried to beat him off. I was too puny. Now look, Tulsa. We're in the middle of a drought. But it's going to rain again. It's nature's way, Tulsa. It's not the hand of the devil. It's the devil's work, I tell you. You must need this devil of yours real bad, Tulsa. Real bad. What is he? Someone you blame for your troubles and failures? Is he your easy way out for oh, you? There you go, using words against me. The words are a potent power, my friend, if you know how to use them properly. Well, if the devil can't hear the roar of cannon, he sure can't hear your jabbering. I aim my voice in a different direction. An ear which can hear the softest whisper, if it's spoken sincerely. I don't ask nobody to fight my battles. I do my own fighting toe to toe, tooth and nail. You got pride. Yes, sir. Real fierce mountain pride. Why, even to help Mary Beth, you wouldn't ask for help. I gotta go back to what I said yesterday. You are just plain mean and spiteful. You wanna see me on my knees like some whip puppet groveling and begging? It'd make you laugh, wouldn't it, to see a mountain man praying? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it would make me laugh. Loud and long. Why, I can't imagine anything funnier than to see a real fierce, proud mountain man praying to the Lord to help save his sick child. I've been too proud. Have I forgotten you can help me? That you can save my little girl? go up to that room, to Mary Beth. Maybe you're not an angel. Angels ain't got whiskers. I like to sleep now.
We're good breakfast fiddles, Mr. Cartwright. Well, thank you. But like I said, he'll folk Don Hunker to charity, so I'll get to paying for him. Oh, come on now, son. You're a guest in this house. Uh, now, just a minute. Hold on, Pa. He and I made a deal. All right, now, the barn needs a good cleaning. You'll find the tools right inside the door. I'll clean her slicker than a whistle. Joe, I could have sworn that today was your day to clean that. Hoss, you know what? I believe you're right. Yeah, well, since you talked yourself out of that little chore, you can help me with mine. No, no. No, no, that, that'd be charity, Hoss. Us flatland folk don't go for charity. Well, how's Mary Beth feeling this morning? Sleeping right now. But she ate her porridge fine. Yeah. She even asked for more. Well. Here, everybody, it's raining outside. Raining! You don't believe in rainmakers, Mr. Cartwright. It's a mite late, but you'll have to admit I finally came through. Oh, I believe in a rainmaker, Tulsa. The uh, rainmaker you talked to last night. The one you prayed to, to help Mary Beth. Look, I'm just trying to help you, mister. You helped. Now, just take it easy, friend. I lost my horse, and now I'm buying your horse. He's not for sale, mister. Well, you'd better change your mind. I'm paying you a good price for him. Your life. Looks about right, doesn't it? it? Looks fine to me, Paul. I just wonder if little Joe's gonna like it. Oh, why shouldn't he? Well, he probably figures he's getting a little bit too old for surprise birthday parties. Oh, come on now. Man's never too old to have some friends over to help him celebrate an occasion. Well, the beef's all dressed and ready for the spit. The musicians will be here before sundown. Good. Yeah, I think he'll be pleased.
No. No. so much fun since old Judge Parter married for the fourth time. <laughs> it's nice having you, Clint. <laughs> Good night, Ben. And you stop worrying, Ben. Worrying? About what? I'm not worried. Ben, I've known you for a long time. Little Joe, he'll make it home fine. And it was a real fine party. Thank you. Let's Thank go. Thank you for coming. Are you going somewhere? Ain't we all? I'm going to bed. Paul. I'm going to bed, and I suggest you do the same. Paul, he's in trouble. Isn't that a fool thing to say? His horse could have thrown a shoe. Anything could have made him late. Sure. Could have stopped off in a saloon to, to have a drink. Not tonight. Not with $2,000 in his saddlebags. Now, Joseph is old enough to take care of himself. I'm not going to go out searching for him just because he's a couple of hours late. He's not a child. Besides, what if he was tired and decided to just bed down for the night in the hotel? We'd look kind of foolish going out looking for him, wouldn't we? Mm-hmm. We'd all feel a lot better, though, wouldn't we? I am not worried. I'll get changed. Deserted. It was nothing. You rest for a while. I don't understand. There was nothing. There was nothing when I came here. Please, Mr. Cartwright. You know me? You had some papers in your pocket. Not very ladylike, I'm afraid, but we were curious. But there was, there was nothing here. I came into this town and there was nothing. Please. You, you rest now, Mr. Cartwright. Rest, please. You will live. What did you find out about him? Only his name. He's young and he's strong. But he carries a gun. A lot of men carry guns. They're not all willing to use them. 
I think this boy will. And if he won't? We've got to try. We've waited so long for someone. Received from Little Joe Cartwright. Little Joe. Yeah, I know what you mean. That's what I get for being the youngest member of the family. 200 head of cattle, $10 a head, $2,000. That's a lot of money. It was a lot of money. I don't have it anymore. But I'll get it back. Sorry, I didn't mean that. I just had to know. Know what? About you. The man that just left the room. That's my father. What about this whole town? Martinville. Yesterday, it wasn't Martinville. Yesterday, it... You had a head wound, and you'd been in the sun a long time without water. The sun does funny things to a man. I did the strange things, but yesterday, this town was nothing. A ghost you town rest was deserted. Now. We'll talk again later. I don't want to rest now, Miss... Uh, Corman, Louise Corman. And you will rest. Doctor's orders. Well, I, I don't take orders from the doctor. However, if his nurse would ask me very nicely... She already has. And she's very strict. She's also very pretty. All right, I'll rest. I'll rest. How is he? Curious, asking questions. And you told him? Exactly what you wanted me to tell him, nothing. I was just getting ready to close, Mrs. O'Brien. It's not important. I can come back. Not bad. It would make a lovely dress, don't you think? Well, not for mourning, of course. Not for a widow. But for a fiesta, yes. You are planning a fiesta, a celebration, now that your savior has arrived, your messiah. Or is he your fatted calf? Well, I'm going to take another chance. Raise you ten thousand. I'll just call you. High stakes today. Yeah, it would be if toothpicks were money. Well, it's more fun this way. It makes us all feel important. <laughs> well, now, feel important somewhere else. It's lunchtime. Oh, come on, come on, Louise. Really, I can't eat any more today. Now, if the good women of Martinville can take the time to cook... Yeah, I know, Louise. I know that I can take the time to eat it. Are you folks always this way to strangers? Well, whenever we can help someone... I know, but everybody in this town stopping by to say hello, bringing me gifts. Anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with it. It just means you've got a real swell town here. You ought to be very proud of it. Hey, wait a minute, where are you going? The fellas left me $20,000 in the hole. Well, here. 
This makes us all about even. We'll start again after lunch. Okay, got a deal. Uh, I think the patient can sit up for a little while longer. All right. Chicken soup, Mrs. Allison. Potato soup, Mrs. O'Leary. Beef broth, Mrs. Turner. Irish stew and beef stew. Where do you want to start? That's a good question. Eloise, who's that? We were talking about chicken soup. What's going on here in Martinville? Well, a minute ago, you thought it was the most wonderful town in the world. Look, that's not the point. But the day I came here... You were ill. We've gone all over that. Yeah, we haven't come up with any answers. You, your father, the people of this town. Where was everyone that day? We were at a funeral. We were burying our sheriff. A boy, not 25 years old. We need him, Mrs. O'Brien. You should know better than anybody else how much we need him. Well, you expect me to cry for you? No, we... We expect you not to get in the way. All of us. We may not get another chance. But you had a chance once. What did you do with it? Well... Well, this time it may be different. We hope you won't get in the way. Nobody's seen him. He certainly would have stopped here. He always did when he came this way. What do we do now? Backpack some more and keep backpacking till we find him. Hi, how are you? All right. Yeah, stop worrying. I feel <laughs> fine. Mr. Cartwright. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, Miss O'Brien, our late sheriff's wife. Very pleased to meet you, Mrs. O'Brien. Don't be pleased to meet me. Don't be pleased at anything that happens in this place. Mr. Cartwright, leave this town while you still can. Tell him, Miss Corman. Or don't you know what these people are planning? They're going to kill you, just as surely as they killed my husband. You leave him alone. Stop saying such ridiculous things. Wait a minute, Louise. What's she talking about? It's nothing. Ever since her husband died, she's been imagining all sorts of things. You poor fool. You poor misguided fool. Black and white pinto, huh? That's right. He was here, just like you described. And? He rode out of here yesterday morning. Said he was headed for the cantina up by Dry Bluffs. Yeah, well, he never got there. Well, it's not my fault. Somewhere between here and Dry Bluffs. All healed? Yeah, I'll be fine, thanks to you. Now I guess I better be going. Why so soon? Something I have to do. You find that money you lost? It was trusted to me, and I let it be taken away. I've got to try to find him. I don't know how, but I'm going to have to try. Goodbye. Please don't leave me, little Joe. Please don't leave me. Masterson, I'm leaving now. I, 
I just wish there was some way I could repay you for all you've done for me. There is. Put that on. You're not, you're not serious. Well, we're convinced that you could handle the job. Well, that's very flattering, but... And we're convinced that you will. Well, I'm not, a, I'm not a lawman, Mr. Corman. No, but you're a man, aren't you? Well, a man pays back his debts. Now, wait a minute. Now, you said you owe us something. All right, we're telling you how you can pay us back. You're telling me or you're asking me? Whichever way you prefer. We're offering you a job. It's as simple as that. Is it? Is it that simple? Then why don't you start by telling me what happened to your last sheriff? Why have I been warned to get out of this town? We thought you liked the people of Martinville. We thought you might want to help us. Help with what? Now, why doesn't somebody tell me what's going on in this town? All right, I'll tell you. And I'm sorry. Will you lend me a horse? Mr. Masterson? Will you sell me a horse? Thanks. Need a horse. Anybody here got a horse they want to sell? You'll get no horse from anyone in this town, Cartwright. Stop him, Louise. I've tried to, well, Papa. Well, then try again. How? You're a woman, he, he likes you. But he's also a human being. One human being, one soul. We're 216 now. Which is more important? Little Joe! Little Joe, wait! Little Joe! Oh, I got a lot of friends out there. What they do? Hide all the livestock? All right, I walked into this town. I was in a lot worse shape. I can walk out. We're all prisoners in this town, little Joe. Can't you see that? What do you mean? Who's prisoners? His name is Felix Matthews. He drove off our livestock and he killed our sheriff. He's the leader of a band of outlaws who operate out of this town. They disappear for weeks at a time, but they always come back, and then the terror begins all over again. But why don't they stop them? We can't stop them. Once we might have, but it was profitable not to. They spent money here, and they let us alone. But then slowly, they became stronger and stronger, and we became weaker. And suddenly, Martinville was their town. Why, why didn't you tell me all this before? Oh, I know I should have. But I wasn't sure I wanted you to get involved in our problems. What well, changed your mind? They're coming back tonight. They'll have their pockets full of money and the smell of blood in their nostrils. And do you think whiskey and food is all they want? Felix Matthews likes me. I managed to keep him away so far, but a girl gets tired, little Joe. And it's a long losing battle. You mean that your father and the rest of this town is going to let something like that happen? They want to stop them, little Joe, but they're afraid. They need help. And you're the only one who can help them. What should we do, little Joe? 
Fight him! Has it ever occurred to you to fight him? It occurred to us. We're just not fighters, that's all. Most men are until they have to be, till their families are threatened to their countries. Look, all we did was ask you to help us. You didn't ask me to do anything. You tried to trick me into taking a job I didn't know anything about. We're asking you now, honestly and openly. Look, no one man can do this for you. It takes the whole town, every single one of you. We have the manpower, we have the guns. What we need is a leader. Someone who's willing to risk his life for us. Let's go outside, we got work to do. It's not going to be nearly high enough, Cartwright. A good horse could easily jump that. Well, that's the idea. We want him to jump it. So we're on the inside. We're going to fire up that coal oil and he'll be trapped. Hey, Pete, Gene, get that coal oil and start soaking this barricade good. You got the rifles for the roofs and the shotguns for the barricade? I'll have them. All right, I'll go down the other end of the street and check the other barricade. All right. What did you tell him? How poor you all are? How unfortunate? Or how helpless? Do you think he would have believed the truth? No. Thank you for that anyway. Then you promised him something. What, Miss Corman? Sweet nights and soft guitars for the rest of his short life? Long nights under the moonlight? The sweet smell of sage? Or was it something more down to earth? Something else that he won't receive? Get out of here. I thought so. You got him to fall in love with you. That's it, isn't it? Please leave, Katie. Why? So you can throw that boy's life away? What he doesn't know won't hurt him? He doesn't have to die. Doesn't he? One man against all of them. Please, Katie, don't you see? He's all we have. He's our only chance to get out of this town. To get off these streets after so many years. And for that, he dies. Yes, he dies. Oh, sure, they're building barricades, acting like brave men now. But you know, when the showdown comes, that boy will have no more help than my husband had when he thought he could fight back. Because even if the help were theirs to give, the people of this town just don't have it in them. They never did. They're getting exactly what they deserve. Wait. Not so high? Nothing. Are you sorry? Sorry about what? We got you involved in all of this. No, I'd be a lot worse off if I hadn't wandered into Martinville. I'd be lying out on the desert somewhere dead. Are you doing this for me? I'm doing it. That's all that's important. No, it isn't. You have to be doing it for the whole town. All of them. OK. 
okay if that's the way you want it. No, it has to be that way. If not, it's all waste. They're coming. We can hear their horses. All right, that's far enough, Matthews. Well, well, well. What have we here? You know what it is, and you know what it's for. Masterson, Corman, get up there where I can see you. Get up here. Are you playing games again? Well, you see, Mr. Matthews... Don't mister him, Corman. This isn't a game, Matthews. You're through in this town. Get that straight right now. All right, Masterson, get this pile of junk out of the middle of the street right now. We're coming through. This pile of junk stays. You're going to let this boy dig his own grave, Masterson, with his mouth. It's my grave. Maybe. There's no maybe about it. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Me and the boys are going to rest up for a spell. And then we'll come down. Maybe it'll be in an hour. Maybe we'll wait till sunup. Maybe. Maybe not even then. Just maybe. Oh, but we'll be back. And if this barricade is still up when we get here, do you know what we're going to do then? Well, let me tell you, gentlemen. Have you ever seen a town wiped out, taken apart, piece by piece? Well, you've got an experience in store for you, gentlemen. Think about that. Oh, and, uh, Masterson, if you make us fight, don't waste all your ammunition on me and the boys. Save some for the women folk and the kids. I tried to warn you. It'll work out fine. If you leave now, while you have the chance. You know, you sound like you're trying to protect Felix Matthews. I thought you said he was the man that shot your husband. He pointed the gun. He pulled the trigger, yes. But that's all. You want to know what killed my husband? Cowardice. It was the cowardice of a whole town. Fight them, my husband said. And they were all for it. Build a barricade, he said. And they ran out into the street with their chairs and their mattresses. Or did you think this idea of yours was 100% original? This time it'll work. Will it? It's been tried before, my friend. And do you know what happened? They've learned their lesson, little Joe. They'll know better this time. Have they? Look at them. They're beginning to fall apart already. And in a few hours, the barricades will come down again. And when that happens, Felix Matthews will ride in after you. And not one man in this town will lift a finger to stop him. It's his. It's like one man on horseback and one on foot. Yeah, going right out in the desert. That's right. Thank you. 
easy. It's no use. We can't win. What do you mean he's right? You're winning. Can't you see that? You called his bluff. Matthews can't fight his way into this town. No, not now, he can't. But in a few days, a few weeks... How long can we go on living like this? In other words, you want to quit. No, it's not a question of quitting. It's, it's a question of common sense. We gambled. We lost. And you're always going to lose, Masterson. You and men like you. Because you're willing to trade your basic rights for a few stinking pennies. And when you find out you made a bad deal, you scream you're being victimized. Don't judge us, boy. Why shouldn't I judge you? Because... Well, because you don't know us. Well, we thought we could be strong, but... No, no, Corman, you thought I could be strong for you. Well, I can't, not by myself. So we lose. Again, we lose. And you're gonna take it just like that. I tried to warn you, but you wouldn't listen. I tried to tell you what kind of men they are. It's no good. It just didn't work out. I'm sorry, little Joe. I lost him. Last night they were so ready to fight, now I lost him. Wait! I told you to wait! If you want this barricade down, all right. I helped build it. I'll show you how to tear it down. First thing that goes is your courage. That just gets in the way. Next thing that goes is your manhood. Another thing you don't need. Concern for the safety of your women and children. It's too late for that now. All right, and here's the last thing. This is the last thing, but that's got to go too, doesn't it, gentlemen? This is your self-respect. There's what's left of you. Nothing. Now Matthews can ride into this town just like he was going to a Sunday meeting. But a breach goes both ways, gentlemen. If a man can ride into it, another one can walk out, and that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this gun, and I'm going to walk through that barricade, and I'm going to walk down that street up to that mesa, and I'm going to kill as many of Matthews men as I can before they kill me. Now, is there anybody in this town man enough to join me? Well, it's just plain suicide. Maybe not. It's an old cavalry trick, Masterson. When everything seems hopeless, charge. Look, we can do it if you'll just get behind me. Well, they'll put all of us down before we get halfway up that hill. Oh, no, they won't, because it's the last thing they'll expect from you. Look, we can do it. Now, who's with me? I'm with you. I'll go with you if you'll lead us. You know I'll lead you. Can't you see he's right? Can't you see we've got to do it? We must do it! Are you willing to go? Yes. How about the rest of you? The whole go! I'll go talk to the rest of the men at the other barricade. Oh, little Joe, please be careful. I don't want you to worry. It's gonna happen. I got too much going for me. Little Joe, there's something you don't know about us. Cartwright, right. we're ready. When I come back, I want to see you standing right here. Let's get to those rocks as quick as we can and spread out. Let's go.
Well, the money's all there. It's in the saddlebag. Thanks, Ma. But, boy, that's not Matthews. That's the man that stole my horse. It took a lot of doing, son. Tracking him down by yourself on foot. But, boy, I wasn't by myself. I... And the whole town behind me. What town? Where is everybody? Well, Joe, there's no one here except us. Yeah, but I had, I had the whole town behind me, Paul, really behind me. The whole town of Martinville. Little Joe, son, I don't know what you're trying to say or why, but Martinville's been a ghost town for a good number of years. A ghost town? Yeah. Louise! I know there were people in this town. I talked to him. I worked with him. Uh, Joseph, there was also a hot sun and a, and a head wound. The sun does funny things to a person. That's what she said to me. Who? Girl I met here, Louise. Son, Martinville has been a dead town for such a long time. There's even, there's even a legend connected with it. Something about a sheriff or something. O'Brien? Well, I don't know what his name was, but the story goes that Martinville turned its back on him and let him get killed. The sheriff's wife, well, she just put a curse on the whole town, doomed all the people of Martinville to walk the streets of the town for all eternity until some fellow came along who was foolish enough or maybe brave enough to risk his life for them. Sounds sort of weird. Yeah, well, all legends sound weird or a little funny, depending on how you look at them. I know there were people in this town, Pa. Joe. Let's get on home. We'll talk about it. Pa, wait a minute. That wagon, it wasn't here when I first came into town. Must have been. It wasn't, Pa. It was part of a barricade. I know. I built it. I turned that wagon over myself. Joe, come on home. There's nothing here. Son, when a man knows something, deep down in his heart, when he really knows, he doesn't have to argue about it, doesn't have to prove it. Just knowing, that's enough.
বাড়ির কাছে ভরা নদী শেষ জোয়ার জোয়ার ভাটা শেষ হলে শুকনো বানুর চর বাড়ির কাছে ভরা নদী শেষ জোয়ার জোয়ার ভাটা শেষ হলে শুকনো বানুর চর ঢের তালে তুলতে চলে আমার নাই চর চল নৌকা ডুবি চল নৌকা ডুবি খেলবো ভালোবাসার পুরুষ পেয়ে অস্থির আমি গেছি হই 